the one that says she's the ugly one. And, uh, come on up here. So, this is my daughter. She's right now rolling her eyes. <laughs> if, 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 you don't, if you miss that, she'll do it again any minute. Okay? So, this is my daughter. And, I, and the reason I wanted to actually call her up here is because I want you to see how powerful, I want to see a couple things. First off, I want you to see how powerful shame is. All right? Because uh, if, if you look at this person and imagine that she thinks she's the ugly one, imagine what the power of shame has to steal from us. Because if this person can think she's the ugly one, And here's what's interesting. I like this part of my favorite. <laughs> I don't want to relive the video, but part of the video was like, when she was a little girl, she said, you know, while I was walking through the house, she said, Rick, I'm the ugly one. And she explained to me why she was the ugly one, okay? Because her lips were bigger, her nose was wider, her hair was kinkier, her skin was darker, and she's mostly referring to her sisters, okay? And the thing about shame versus guilt, see about shame is that if you actually look at her, <laughs> her lips are a little bigger. And her nose is a little wider. Her hair, frankly, was unmanageable. <laughs> okay? But somehow she took these facts that were true about her and they became her. Somehow they became to define, I am the ugly one. Now, she used to come up to me after the whole scene where I renamed her beautiful and stuff. She used to come up to me, right? As a little girl, I'd be working in my office, and she'd come up with uh, the latest picture of her that somebody took, maybe a school photo or whatever. She'd come up with a picture of her, and she'd, she'd, st she'd say, Rick! Rick! That was my name. <laughs> Rick and she'd stick this picture didn't care what I was doing stuck this, stuck this picture and she would say to me aren't I so beautiful <laughs> now here's the, here's the trick though why does a little girl ask her dad aren't I so beautiful Yeah, she's, she's actually, as soon as I tell her, yes, you're beautiful, as soon as she does this and walks away, what's this next step tell her? You're not. It's a battle. It's a daily, ongoing battle. Made even worse for, and so, when, you know, made even worse by the fact when, when she and I walk into a restaurant together, they think she's my girlfriend. <laughs> Is that what happened? <laughs> and when she was a little girl, they were really hoping she wasn't my girlfriend, but they were pretty sure she wasn't my daughter. How does a girl endure that? I don't know. I don't know. But when you're, when I was, a, when I, as a dad, okay, as soon as I hear that my little girl needs to know and is so deeply needing to know that she's beautiful, I have terror in my heart. Because if she needs that affirmation from a man, she's going to have a very, very difficult life. Okay? I mean, I'm just talking about, I'm just talking straight up now. We all know this stuff. We don't talk about it. You know? And it's going to be hard to have that need inside of you. To be able to work your way through that. Now, all this stuff is in the book, so it's public information, okay? <laughs> so I'm not speaking out of school. The, the, the thing I didn't say last time, that I'm going to say this time, though, is that 
Are y'all okay with this? This is sort of a sidebar. Is this all right? You sure? You guys are giving me a lot of leeway here, but um, there was a, a time when she was in middle school, and I'll spare you the details, but the way it ended up was I leaned my head into her, and she was pounding on my head. And I said, just let it out. Let all it, let it out. Just and it's okay if I tell this? Do I know? You always do that, okay? What is she going to say, right? And I can say later, I asked. Um, and, and later, we're actually driving to the hospital. Not for me, but... Um, <laughs> Not for her. And she's in the back. It was, it was a Suburban, and so we had a third seat, and so we put her in the, you know, the, the third seat. And we're waiting for my wife to get, lock up her building, and, and I hear this voice in the back of the car. And the voice says, Do you hate me? And right there, we're at the root issue. You hate, if you really see, you just, Rick, you just saw the real me. You saw the me that's afraid. And I'm 99% sure you're going to leave. Okay? I'm 99% sure you're going to leave. Now, here's what's amazing about shame. This is why it's in Genesis. Genesis is all about humanity, right? You see, you see a young African-American woman here who came up in a whole different socioeconomic system than I did, okay? She looks very different than me. She came up very different than me. But here's the thing about shame. I'm pretty sure she's going to abandon me too. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to screw up as a dad and that when I do, no, I know I will. And that when I do, she's going to leave me. We just had this conversation, didn't we? White, middle-aged man. Obviously good-looking. <laughs> Very accomplished. You know, you're all thinking it. That's all right. I'll just speak what everybody's thinking. And I'm scared to death my kid's going to leave me. When she finds out who I really am. That's shame. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, male, female, young, old, rich, poor. It doesn't matter. 